I think the question I asked you was, a lot of people ask if there's a, a specialist diet for diabetes. Um, and there's often lots of articles in the news about, you know, extreme diets, etc. What, what, what would your response be to someone who asked you that? I would say to have a normal balanced diet, you know, including all the foods, but including some foods more than the others. Okay. So now we, we know from where we get the sugar. Mm -hmm. It's not always from the sugar or sugary uh, things, but we also get a lot of sugar from carbs. By choosing carbs, what type of carbs we eat okay. and the amount of carbs we eat. So what I've realized is, and, you know, eat, people's understanding of, of nutrition diet is is very different to how what we understand from it so in a very simplified way so carbohydrates we discussed and and how what how what causes diabetes but from my understanding was different types of carbohydrates is that right yes that's right now there are carbohydrates which are very good mm -hmm. and there are carbohydrates which can rise your sugar very quickly okay like uh, the white rice or white bread yeah. they can immediately put up your sugar because they're easily digested so so they you eat them, they get digested quickly, and, then, yeah. and it causes a huge spike exactly. in your blood sugar, and then a crash. Is that right? That's very right. And okay. that is what is not good. Okay. These spikes are not good. Yeah. Whereas the whole meal, the whole, uh, the brown rice, mm. the whole meal bread, this slowly increases the sugar levels. Yeah. It takes time, and yeah. it remains. So these are good carbs. So they, for example, bran rice or wholemeal bread, etc., uh, or pa wholemeal pasta, for example. So what they'll do is take a little bit more time to get digested and therefore release sugar slowly and sustainably. So instead of spikes like this, we're sort of going like that. Exactly. That right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. But okay. so there's something called the ones which get absorbed quickly and yeah. puts the sugar up, mm -hmm. they're called high glycemic. Mm -hmm. And the ones which are moderate mm -hmm. or slow, mm -hmm. they're called moderate or low glycemic. Mm -hmm. So we should look into what carbs yep. we eat. So, so we don't need to cut carbohydrates completely out of our diet. No. Which is what a lot of people think or do. Th that is, it's one of our most important foods. Mm -hmm that helps us, that gives us sugar mm -hmm. for our cells to burn to do our day-to-day -day work. Okay. And we need sugar. We need carbs. Yeah. Other than carbs are proteins. We yeah. need all sorts of fruits. We need po uh, proteins, yeah. carbs, yeah. meats, mm -hmm. oils, and vitamins. Mm -hmm. These are all required for muscles and body to work yes. healthily. Yeah. So just, just back to just, I've got a question for you based on carbs. And I'm sure this is a question you get asked all the time because I do. Uh, when people say... I just don't like the taste of brown rice or honey or bread. Um, I can only eat white bread or white rice. What would you say to that? Or how, how, how do we go around helping them with that? Oh, that's always the first time. Okay. That's always trying something. Yeah. yeah. There agree. are lots of options. Mm -hmm. You can always try. They can see how it goes. There are varieties in, I think, supermarkets. Yeah. Type of food. Yeah. And... Uh, I think our diabetic.uk also gives a lot of recipes how you can prepare this carb. Oh, there's lots of, yeah, lots of recipes and, yes. and ways to make healthy food. A lot of people have this common misconception that healthy food isn't tasty. But exactly. But there's definitely ways that we can... Exactly. Make also, in the mix, you get uh, mixed bread. Mm-hmm. That was 50-50. That's a great option, yeah. yeah That's a okay. good option. And, and they, this 50-50 uh, may be of... They're both same, but and and the glycemic index is, I think, a low in that. Mm, yeah. Okay. And you, and you mentioned um, protein. So protein is is very important for number one. It keeps you fuller for longer. It's also very important for muscle repair and muscle building and just overall cell function. So I think uh, good examples of protein are things like fish. Poultry, chicken, That's occasionally, right. you know, lean red meat. Occasionally, if you're vegetarian, um, then uh, there's lots of plant-based options of things exactly. of high protein. So things like intermittent yeah. tofu um, and sort of beans and lentils, etc. All good high protein. They foods. are very rich in proteins mm -hmm. and very good good source of, of food. Yeah. Also eggs. Yes. Yeah. And it's very yeah. simple. Yeah. Also, the way you eat eggs. We can make small, small changes in our diet. It's mm -hmm. not something big you have to go. You know, people get scared. 
when they're diagnosed as diabetic or pre-diabetic, they may they think they have to change the whole whole life and whole pattern, which sometimes is very difficult. But what we would recommend is just give small small changes, which are more sustainable. You can carry on these things, and for a longer time. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, what do you say? If I, you can swap like side egg. You, you can try poached egg, um, boiled egg. Just substituting things yeah. like. Yeah. So, a question I get asked a lot, just coming off that, is, what about fruits? That's a good question. <laughs> can I eat fruits? I've got diabetes, doc. Can I eat fruits? I've had fruits have a lot of sugar. You can. Yeah. You, you need those fruits. Yes. We need five portions. Okay. Fruits and vegetables. That is recommended. And we need day to day. Okay. That's a good source of fiber. Vitamin. Yeah. So we do need fruit. Mm-hmm. But also looking at what type of fruit. Yes. Yeah. There are fruits which are highly high in sugar. Mm-hmm. What are the fruits which are high in sugar? Uh, so typically, the, the first two that spring to my mind are mangoes and right. um, because I get asked uh, asked that a lot. Now, fruits, it's really important to emphasize that having lots of lots of health benefits um, for, you know, your physical and mental well-being. But obviously in diabetes, that's a question we get asked a lot. Like you said, you, you can eat fruits and you should continue to eat fruits. There are certain fruits that we Shouldn't avoid, but just be cautious of how much we're eating. But uh, generally, things like berry. with the right amount, melon, berries, grapefruits, etc., uh, all have lower sugar content. That's right, and you can, and they're good as you have lots of antioxidants, blueberries, strawberries, and all this. They're recommended. You can even add them to your uh, yogurt, mm-hmm. your porridge, mm-hmm. and you can you can have it in uh, different recipes. Yeah, they're good. Uh, that reminds me, I had a patient yeah. come back when we were doing this group session mm-hmm. and he said, you, you know what, I'm really good. I've cut down all my food, but I have fruits. That's right. And then we talked, he said, but still my sugar is going up. And then uh, when we had a conversation, he said, I cut, I have a lot of fruits together. So it's a lot of portion. Yes, and so I think it's, it's very important for everyone to get it right. Yes. How much of food, what is, what is, what is the amount of food required. And I think that helps to bring down and manage your diabetes or pre-diabetes. Mm-hmm. So what, what kind of foods do you suggest when you see, when you see your, your patients in your, in your clinics, your diabetes clinics? What, what kind of, so we've mentioned substitutes, we've mentioned whole grain uh, as, as our carbs, we've mentioned our proteins. What kind of foods do you suggest that are, are beneficial? I would, I always, uh, it depends upon patient to patient. Yeah. And I think we have patients coming from different countries. Mm-hmm. Their eating habits are different. The type of food they eat different. So depending upon them, I, we just have, to, I just explain to them which are the foods. I just go through what they eat mm-hmm. from morning to evening. That's one thing I ask from breakfast, afternoon, lunch, and I, I have a look into what are the type of food they eat. Mm-hmm. There are people who eat a lot of bread. Yeah. So there are people who eat a lot of rice. Mm-hmm. So I just focus on things which are high in carbohydrates, mm-hmm. tell them how to reduce portion sizes. Yeah. There can't we come to portion, how much food we eat. That is very, very important as well. Sometimes we eat far more than what is required. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it depends upon the activity, the age of the person as well. So if you're not active and if you're having a lot of portion, that may contribute to increased weight, high sugar and so on. So yeah, so that's a good point. So I often see see people who have made positive changes and started exercising, which we will come on to in the upcoming weeks about exercise. and and they've they've made changes, good positive changes towards their diet, but still their sugar levels don't seem to improve. And when you question them further, you know they're still eating big plates of rice, but then they're eating more healthier uh, sides with their rice, or, or eating lean meats. Or but but the the portion of rice is is really big. So I think, like you said, portion size and and knowing how much exactly how much is required. 
From morning, if you go to them and exactly listen, from morning to evening, I see people eating oil cups and very little protein. Yeah. So, because I'm not sure. So, if you go to discuss a little bit and understand, mm -hmm. and if they understand, patient understand as well, the consequences of eating a big portion. Mm -hmm. So, I think that it's helpful for them to make changes. Mm -hmm. Also, I show them my very favorite uh, Your plate. Your famous plate. This is my favorite plate. And the size uh, amount of food we eat and what this plate should contain. Are we able to zoom in the mouth? So this is the right amount of uh, carbohydrates, the veg and proteins, and salad, so on. So let's just, have we got, okay. So th this is what we're saying. Our, when we're having a meal, this is what our portion sizes should look like. Okay. So approximately almost half of the plate should be vegetables and salad. salad. Is that right? That's right. And then is that about a third? Is proteins. Okay. And the meat, fish, or yep. tofu, yep. and then the rest is the carbs, the good brown bread or potatoes or whatever you eat. Okay. And also the portion, you see, sometimes we take a big plate and we try to fill the whole plate. Yeah. So by taking a smaller plate, mm -hmm. this is a nine, a nine inch plate, I think. Okay. So by taking a small plate, so that will have less food. So by making small changes, that can help to manage your diabetes or pre-diabetes and as well, uh, also the weight. And people who have implemented, you know, this kind of the, I, li I like this picture on the plate. Have you seen a good yes. uh, reduction yes. or a more positive, they feel better within themselves? They feel better. Initially, they told me a few days, they feel very hungry when they reduce the amount of food, mm -hmm. but subsequently they get used to mm -hmm. that amount and also eating at what time. Okay. That is also important, the timing. Sometimes eating late night, having a big portion of meal and going to bed doesn't help much. But eating earlier food. So I just work around at what time are the working pattern. Some of them start work very early, come down, come, um, have a meal late mm -hmm. and they go to bed. So by by working around, uh, so they themselves work out how, how they have their meals. So by explaining to them how the food is absorbed and so on. Okay. So the portion sizes, as we said, also explaining there what are the calorie requirement for a female and a male. So I think, so now they say the adult should be having about 2,000 calories a day. Is that? And the, for, the, uh, for the females. Females. And male, 2,500. Mm -hmm. This is, this is an average. But if somebody wants to reduce weight, then the female is it's by, it's around 1,500 and the male is around 2,000. In that sort of recounting. That's calorie, okay. And how, how many of the patients you see do, actually do count the calories and look at how many They do. Some they of get. them are very good. Nowadays, we have the watches. You, yeah. They go to the gym. There's apps. There, there, there are apps. There is yeah. a good uh, carbon count, uh, uh, carbs and calorie counter app. So these are the books as well. I think it's recommended by Diabetic.uk. They give good information about the portion sizes. We have the various world foods and so on. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Also, many times we, t we tell the patient, look at the labels, mm -hmm. food labels. And food labels may help a lot. Sometimes you have the traffic lights, which gives you the content of what, what is sugars, the fat, and uh, uh, the, um, you know, the, the, the behind will be the nutrition values of all the foods. So anything green is good, right? So anything green is good. There are traffic lights. You have yeah. bread. I have got another one, which everybody says uh, nuts are good. Everything is good. But also, you see, the night, night, uh, nuts have got red. That means it has more of fat. If you see the amber, this is the carbs and the sugars are okay, whereas the fats are more. So by knowing how much it contains, this, this traffic lights really helps how to manage what you eat. I mean, but what is what, that? My only, the only thing I would say on that is it just says fat. It doesn't say whether it's it's good fats or saturated. I think that does it says to it is fat. Does it? Yeah, but it, it doesn't say whether it's so a handful of nuts yes. a day is another question I get asked. But these are good sources of, of good fats. 
Yes. But obviously, I would like with anything, it's the, the within limits. Or exactly, portion, so. exactly. The portion we say is what can, comes in your fist. Mm. That's what comes in a pump as a portion. Well. So even if you want to eat nuts, like uh, walnuts, mm. they are good. Brazil nuts, walnuts, they're healthy nuts, mm. right? Mm. Whereas peanuts, they may have more fat. Yeah. Also swap for unsalted. Yeah. Because the salt content also we, we have to uh, look into when we look at, at the foods. Mm. Because some of the foods have a very high salt content and our daily requirement is just six grams. We normally get with, within our food uh, what we eat, but sometimes we try to put a lot of salt, especially on, on the top of the food, that you can swap with uh, some spices, herbs, and things like that. Fine. So, so <clears throat> there is a lot to be said for, not. for diet and high risk of diabetes and diabetes. And I've seen, and I'm sure you've probably seen more than... I have of people bringing down their HbA1c massively just through just through diet just through diet and, and watching what they eat yeah and making small changes small but sustainable changes over a long period of time exactly. rather than going on extreme diets then going back to normal and then you just see the HbA1c going like this whereas like we explained just like with whole with processed foods um, sorry will uh, whole grain foods is having a a nice sustained exactly uh, small changes. That's right. Because small, small changes. Sometimes people really go for, when they're diagnosed, they really go on diet, everything, the sugar comes down. After a year or so, they're back to their normal. Yeah. And then again, you see the rise. Yeah. So by doing small, small things like eating out, takeaways, we're doing those changes by eating less of takeaways that may help. Soft drinks is another uh, food where they can have lots of sugar and lots yeah. of calories. Yeah, yeah. By soft drinks and fruit juices. Fruit juices. Very high in sugar. Very high in sugar. Mm -hmm. And by substituting this to water or uh, any whole whole fruits, mm -hmm. that's much better than having all this just no, I agree. I agree. So Maria, a question we had um, was, what does glycemic index mean? How would you, what's the best way to, to describe it? Glycemic index is, what, how I could explain is how fast the, the, Carbs are absorbed. Okay. It's the rate at which the carbs are absorbed in the blood. Okay. So that is, some are absorbed immediately after they're digested and absorbed. Mm -hmm. And so the sugar levels go quickly. And that was what we were talking about the white rice or the, the yes. white bread. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that, that is what, so the, the, there are foods which put this uh, sugar up quickly, mm -hmm. there are foods which put this sugar up moderately or low. So this is what we are. We want something which goes slowly high. So a question we've just been asked is, um, South Asians are, are generally, a lot, a lot of them are genetically or predisposed to diabetes. And the, the consensus is that Indian diets are generally can be quite unhealthy for or, or not good for your diabetes. What would your top tips be in regards to that? Basically, all Indian diets, we cook our meals. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. We cook from the raw ingredients. It's more freshly cooked meals. But my top tip would be reducing the carbs, reducing the oil, frying. A lot of time we deep fry things. Yeah. We fry the onions and use a lot of oil. So by reducing that, my other option would be um, using uh, boiled or oven bake instead of deep frying or frying mm -hmm. oven and steaming the food. Yeah. I already seen the carbs. Eating more of uh, uh, vegetables and fish, d reducing the carbs, rice, mm -hmm. rotis, mm -hmm. and so on. So the question we just got asked is, how big should a roti or chapati be? Uh, the, size, the size of the roti or chapati should be not bigger than your palm. Okay. That's a portion. And how many of those should we be eating? One more than two. Not more than two. Okay. Day. Have you got any top tip recipes for healthy Indian diet? Yes. Top tip recipes will be steaming your veg veggies. Okay. Okay. I would steam my, put my all my veggies. And it's nice to have a colorful veggies, mix lots of colorful vegetables and uh, steam them. Instead of using salt, you can use pepper, uh, spice them with pepper, herbs and just I, I sometimes uh, sprinkle a little bit of uh, desiccated coconut 
and it tastes good. <laughs> All right, no more questions. Thank you. All right, thank you for joining us today. And uh, I think next week we're going to be talking about exercise and and the benefits that can have not just for diabetes but for your overall health. See you guys next week. Bye.